Hi, welcome back. I'm Claire Cousins and this is one of my extra videos from the Textile East Fair. So yeah, enjoy. This one I've decided to have a go or play around with an idea I've been um, had in my head for some time. I've done in the past quite a lot of batik or wax resist work. Um, whilst I was in India we got to do a, a resist technique using mud and sawdust. Um, and then I've, I've also found from watching other YouTubers, um, whose names unfortunately I can't recall so I do apologise, um, and they've been using things like Elmer glue. Now as a child I can remember doing an art lesson where we did it with flour and water paste. So come to my desk and let see me have a play and then you can decide for yourself if it's a technique you want to explore more. Right, you'll have to excuse my stained wooden desk. Uh, but what I've got here is just an old bowl. It's a Christmas pudding bowl that I've recycling, used again. I've got some regular plain flour and I'm just going to do, I'm only going to do a small sample so one tablespoon is enough. And then all I'm going to do, kettle water, it's not boiling but it's still warm and I want it I don't know about you but as a child sometimes we used to even use flour and water paste as a glue I don't know how many of you remember that best to avoid lumps you want a nice smooth paste. If you use water that's too hot, um, you can make it too gloopy. So please be aware of that. And I will probably use plain flour as opposed to like self-raising. Oh, that does look gloopy. Add a bit more water. Might be that my water's too hot actually. Oh, I think that's getting there. I don't know if you can see the consistency when I pour it, but it's sort of. It's like thick poster paint. So that's that one I've mixed up. The other one that I've seen other people have a go at is um, using Elmer's glue. Now I didn't think we could get Elmer's glue in the UK, but um, believe it or not we can. And this is from Direct Smiths. So yeah, our local high street sells it. So do use your high street. What I've done is I pre-prepared a piece of um, cotton now it's been, been pre-washed several times because what it actually is, I'm recycling an old pillowcase that has ripped. So it's quite a delicate fabric. But as I say, I'm only experimenting, so it doesn't matter. Now normally when you're doing a wax resist technique or batik of a te of technique, you would use one of these in hot wax. Now I've got a, I've got a hot wax pot, but I, I wanted just to experiment because sometimes I don't want to be lugging it out. I don't want to be getting the hot wax out. Um, I wanted to try something perhaps children could access easier without electric and all that sort of thing. So this is a chanting, T-J-A-N-T-I-N-G, a chanting. And it's, a, um, in this case, it's a brass bowl, which keeps hot with a hot liquid and you pour it like a teapot. Obviously I can't do that with these, but I thought I'd just show you. And they come in different shapes and sizes. But that's the regular chanting. What I could do with this, I've let the flour settle a little bit, which helps, helps it go a bit more gloopy. I mean, I could, I don't, know, I don't think it will work though, I could try and just pour it off my spoon. Um, I'm not gonna try that because I don't think that will work. So I'm gonna go and get a paintbrush. What I might also try is crochet hook. 
Sounds a strange thing to suggest, but what you could do, let's give it a go, shall we? You can dip it in there, pick it up, and then gently draw with it that way. That works quite nicely. I have no clue what I'm doing, I'm just, I've got no ideas for a design. I'm just gonna draw a few straight lines, going one way, lines go the opposite way just to do another one yeah that works so if you don't want to get your paint brushes all clogged up with flour you can do it with a crochet hook knitting needle, kebab skewer, I'm not sure if we could, I mean when I was in India we did it with mud and we dipped our blocks into this mud. So what I might do is try out one of my new blocks, dip it in the flower paste. This is one of the blocks I got from India. I don't know if this will work, but should we just try, I can try it and then you'll know yourself if it works or not. I suspect it might not it's very gloopy but I'll try it I'll do it over here oh hmm I might if I don't dip it in quite so far so be a bit more controlled in my dipping Well, something might come out. Who knows? We'll see. Okay, it's worth a go. And then finally, Elmer's glue. <clears throat> Again, I'm not really got any particular idea in mind, just playing. some dots might do some leaves might do some more leaves down this edge Now I've stretched it in a frame um, because that allows the resistance to get into the thing. What I didn't want to do is for it all to get glued and stuck to my bench. Um, when I do batik normally I have a proper batik frame which unfortunately I don't know what I've done with it. Okay, so I'm going to have to come back at a later date and show you what this does. I don't know what I'm doing here, I'm just making a mess now. There will be interesting textures, I think, if nothing else. Right, okay, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to have to come back, I don't know whether that will be another day, but it will certainly be however long it takes for this to dry. I might put it outside, so I'll see you later. Right, my first attempt at uh, block printing the flower paste was a bit gooey, so this time what I've done is I've put the paste on some acetate. 
and then I'm just tapping it lightly on here and then I've got um, fabric on a sort of spongy surface it's just a bit of packaging and I'm trying it on there to see if that's any better I'll try a few of this design see if that works and all it is is a pretty design but as I say I'm not entirely convinced that will work we can but try I'm going to try another leaf Try this leaf this time. does seem to be working better than my first attempt because my first attempt I was just trying to dip it in the bowl and I was picking up far too much of the paste. This time I've allowed the paste to sit for a little while. And I've, as I say, I've spread it out on this acetate. A couple more. And then I'll leave this to dry too. And we'll come back and see if any of these have worked or not. That's the whole point of experimenting. If I do the experimenting, you can see if it will work for you. And uh, you might get a better technique if I find... this doesn't work as I say I'll have had a, the play and uh, you can see if it's worked or not we'll come back when it's dry right we've come back and this one is the one I printed block printed with the flower and that's the first to dry so this one's ready to um, see if it's worked what I've done is I've already mixed up in here my pots, I don't know if you can see them, my pots of Procyon dyes. Um, I've purchased quite a few years back, I think they're for baby feeds, um, they're 70 mil pots and uh, they've got little measuring bits on the side which is really really handy and all I do is I just use these to put my dyes in and what I've discovered for this particular size pot is if I put half a teaspoon of the powder, powder in and then uh, top it up with urea water and with soda crystals for washing up or soda ash then um, it's perfect it's just for, for look, this sort of test sort of dyeing. Um, the solution for urea I tend to use two grams per 70 ml of water um, the solution for the soda ash I tend to use 6 grams per 75 ml. I tend to do that all now by eye. So, And then what I tend to do is put the half a teaspoon of powder or whatever powder I think I'm going to need. I haven't really put that much in these because <coughs> I'm only experimenting. And then I put the equivalent ratio of of water. Um, so normally if I put half a teaspoon in, this, in these little pots of 75 ml, I'd fill them right up with the waters um, so if you're not sure about this about the quantities and the solution mixes then you can actually when you buy your if it, cause I, I bought mine from Colourcraft my protein dyes it actually comes with a formula so yeah it's uh, so that's um, Colourcraft is 
company in which you can buy them this is a powder tub or you can get them much bigger I've got a bigger the bigger pots as well but to be honest with you it'll take forever to get through that unless you're a heavy dyer and I got them from Chemtex <clears throat> right so Uria's in my dyes already let's get cracking now I'm gonna just see let's start off with the lightest colour which is vivid yellow just add that straight on see how that looks at this moment in time we won't see any batik effect because it will just dye the flower it's not until you wash the flower off <sighs> fingers crossed that it will reveal the batik effect that's what you hope for but as I say I won't really know until I come to wash it That's the yellow. Um, what I might do is pour a little bit of that yellow into my little mixing palette. I've got a glass Pyrex lid. I've lost the pot, but the lid makes a perfect mixing palette. Okay, let's try golden. This is more golden yellow. Stripes of that. What I might do is do the leaves in the yellow. Because <clears throat> what I'm then going to do, oh, I don't want to bleed in red as if they're autumnal, or bleed in. Um, Might do. Oh, decisions, decisions. Go do some red along here, I think. I've chosen the smallest brush for the red. continue to bleed up and then I'm going to pop a little tiny bit with a smaller brush I'll take a teal colour on the top I was hoping for a green that's not really come out as a green has it What I've just done is mixed it in that uh, palette that I mentioned earlier. It's quite interesting that actually it's bleeding out, but I'm not worried about that. So I've mixed a green. Let's have a look how. As I say, I've got no plan, I'm just playing, seeing what colours I can get. I can't like teal myself. Teal's quite nice on the leaves. And what I might do is brush around with a bigger brush with the teal around these. Now, with Procyon dyes, you have to leave them to set, um, ideally covered with plastic, because they react, and they're plastic. And if you remember, oh, those of you 
my sort of age you might remember the time when you used to have your, have your hair dyed and then they put a plastic cap on to wait for the reaction um, this is very similar oh goodness look at the vibrance of colour I actually quite like it when it touches the, the red that's quite interesting I'm not being particularly precious I'm just playing don't really mind what I'm going to end up with Using the darker blue, this is the royal blue. Yes, I'm not really worried about what I'm going to end up with. It's just nice to have a play and just see if this, if this technique works with the flower. It might not. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't matter. I've got a base material dyed up that I can overprint, cut up into smaller pieces, put onto something else interesting colours going on. Hmm. Okay, so that's that piece painted. I'm going to leave that to dry and then I'm going to wash, hopefully wash the flower out if it's worked. Do you know, I'm quite tempted to put a bit of teal up here now. I might do that. Was the brush and the teal? interesting to see what happens what I end up with I'll come back with it dry and show you the next stage right this was the result of the flower water and printing block and I wouldn't say it was successful at all well you can it's so subtle there is some bits you can see so what I've decided to do is do it again and then instead of using Procyon dyes use fabric paints because I think what's happening is the dyes creeping underneath um, because the paste isn't going into the fabric as such um, the dye is going underneath so if I do it with fabric paint I've got a funny feeling that might be more successful so I'm going to try it again and uh, see how we get on Okay, I might try. I'm quite tempted to try some different leaves in between, that might be quite nice. As I say, this is all experimental. If it doesn't work, it doesn't really matter. It was only an old tiller case and it will still be a nice interesting base to print, over print with a regular printing technique. So 
it's raining outside it's a bank holiday Monday and just playing so much fun right which I'm quite tempted to do one there as well noise you can hear is the acetate that I've put the flour paste on okay That'll be interesting and use that same design as before I think stick to that can see that very well. I might have to do something else. Do a couple more, though I suspect. Can't really see it. I think this technique with the flower needs a much bolder block. So I'm going to find a boulder block. A less intricately carved one. Set. As I say, this isn't a tutorial at all, it's just you joining me playing. And if it works, it works. As I say, I do recall doing this as a child, not with blocks, but we did do it with mud when I was in India. be certainly interesting to see if this works so I'm going to wait for that to dry and then as I say I think I'll try fabric paint as opposed to dye and see if I get a better better effect but the initial dyed layer will be revealed when I wash the flour off afterwards so yeah it would certainly be interesting okay welcome back now you may remember I uh, dyed it and I've printed it again with another layer of flour. This time I'm not going to use dye on it, I'm going to use fabric paint and see if that works better. It might not work any better. And the paints I've got here are Dylon fabric paints. Um, they're clean, what I call clean colours, I don't know if you can see. Um, so I don't like them like that, so I'm going to give them a little bit of a mix on a palette I've got here to the side. <coughs> so I'm putting a little bit of green, a little bit of yellow, and a little bit of blue on my palette. And the trick is to use these without 
water. So if the colour's too intense, I'm also going to put a little bit of white in the mix. That will soften the colour. So <coughs> let's see. What colour can I end up getting? Now where the um Where the flower is, it should in this area where I'm in it at the moment. The flower should, the flower paste should protect the colour underneath, so it should remain that um, tearly blue. That's what we're hoping for. As you can see, I'm just. Oh, it's mixing on the fabric, a bit of white there. All the bluey green I've got going on there. It's so tempting though to uh, get some water. <coughs> I don't want to. If I have a look at the back, it might show me what it looks like. Oh, yes, it is indicating how it might look. I'll just show you. Mm, okay. This is red at the moment. I'm not entirely thought. I don't think I want to go over that in green, though I do think I'd like to do this in the green as well. So while I've got green on my palette, there you go. As I say, because it's paint, brick paint, I'm hoping it won't seep under the um, <clears throat> won't seep under the flower. So this is a fabric paint from Dylon, and uh, it's fixed by ironing. Now this bit's red, so I'm not. Don't really. Want to, I might do it with brown because you know, it's leaves, it will look a bit autumnal. <clears throat> so I'm just putting a bit of red on my palette to get a brown because I've already got like a green, green and red. A little bit of white will give us a brown. There we go. Oh, what's quite nice is because it's quite streaky on my brush. I quite like that. Let me just show you what I'm doing.
Okay, I think I've already covered this now. If I turn it over, oh yes, you can see here, look how it's going to appear when it's ironed and dry. So I'll leave that to dry. What I have got on here, I was using a piece of polyester. Well, I say polyester, sort of, it's the sort of stuff that comes with your what's the word for in your packaging um, I was using that as my paint palette what I might actually do is print that onto a bit of fabric move that over a little bit at least not want not Oh, wow, I love the texture on that. Oh, I'll do that again. I haven't got enough paint on my brush, have I? I be able to. I like that a lot. I'll do it again here. Really nice. Yeah, I like the textures there. I'll do it one more time. Each time you'll see I'm just cleaning up your brush. <clears throat> no. Stonework or something on a landscape, yeah, I like that. So there you go. Just as I say, that's what I was using as my paint palette, and uh, ended up being my printing block. So hope you've enjoyed that. I'm quite tempted to. I've got an elephant stamp. It would look nice on there. I'm gonna take this over to my drying area, and when it's dry. I'll uh, give it a wash and show you what it looks like. Okay, um, we're back. It's dry. Um, flower's still on there, but I need to fix this fabric paint before I um, wash it. So let me just zoom out a little bit and just show you that I've got my piece of fabric there. A bit of grease proof on the top. I'm just going to use my iron to fix it. It does give an un off an unusual smell. What's nice about it actually, as the, fa as the fabric paint is fixed, it does soften the material. Paper underneath to protect me. A little ironing mat. I'm also going to iron those unusual squares I printed using the uh, palette. <laughs> Everything is ironed. I suspect you probably hear it crunching. That's the flower breaking off, and you'll probably see there's the flower coming off. So it's definitely worked in some places. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to go away. I'm going to wash it. And I'm going to come back and show you. Okay, I've come back, I've washed it, and I have to say, with the bold pattern, 
it's actually worked quite nicely and you can see very pale yellow undertone that was the original dyes I printed I, so I used the yellow under dye and then I put the the resist on which was the flower resist on and then painted it with the bluesy bluey greens and uh, where the flower has been removed um, it's revealed the yellow undercolour. I'm still getting a little bit of flower paste out as I'm brushing it. And then here, this is where it was originally was red. And then I've, especially this, this is a beauty here. If you can see that one, if I'll zoom in, because that's a beautiful leaf. That one there. You can see the leaf shape. The resist has prevented the paint to get, get into it and the brown paint on the top. So that's really quite nice. The more intricate design, it's it's sort of work but not brilliant. So I, I would avoid the more intricate design. The bolder the design, um, the clearer it, it is. And you, if you can work out that these are the leaves just here. I quite like I quite like the skeleton look about them actually. It's quite nice. So there's aspects of this are quite really quite pretty. So yeah, so that was the flower and water paste and then fabric paint on the top. And I say much more successful. So give it a go. Okay, back to the resist technique using Elmer's glue and some flour and water paste. This one on the hoop is now dried. Um, so I'm just going to dye this. I'm going to just randomly choose colours. So um, we'll just see what happens. I'm not going to be too precious. Oh, so I'll start off with the lightest colour first. I'm just going to flick the dyes on because I just kind of want it to be a bit unusual, a bit, a bit wacky. I don't know whether it'd be interesting to see if it can stay within confine. I've done some, if it will bleed out. You want precise, almost like a, yeah, that will hold in. So I've done some blobs where it will hold in. So I'm just popping the dye on anywhere. That's the golden yellow. Um, I think I might put a little bit of teal on. Might be a bit shocking, but well, just as I say, I'm not going to play with colour. I'm just gonna, it's always just more interesting just to whack it on. See what happens. The royal blue. That's really quite nice. Put yellow over the top, it turns it to green. I'm going to go to the, too close to my frame. I don't want to stain my frame. Um, to pop some teal down here. In fact, I might even go so far as to pop some bright pink. They go really wacky. If you can see that where the pink's gone over the teal, it's turned it purple. Just here.
sometimes you've got to think about your colour mixing because you can end up with mud. I think I've ended up with a quite a muddy colour down here. This is certainly a colourful piece. Put some more yellow this side. Drop a bit of red inside that one. See if that stays in. As I say, it's not supposed to be beautiful, it's just whacking colour down for the sake of it. Interesting to see how it turns out. got nowhere to stop as I say because it can get a little bit yucky. Right so what I've done is I've just pop blotched loads of different colours on there to see how each of the colours react with this process and then we'll once it's dry it'll probably be 24 hours later we can wash that all off. Now what I have also discovered is a good idea if you look I've got an old rag underneath and that in itself it's really rather beautiful so that is quite nice anyway I look forward to showing you how that turns out what I have discovered just purely by accident just playing I love to play I've just tipped this uh, frame over so it's, it's the die is actually face down onto the fabric below and I'm going to scribble on here and um, Something really exciting happens. Let me show you. Ha! Ah, I don't know if you can see it. Let me just zoom in. I really like it. Hang on, let me just zoom in. Oh, you can't see it. But the die has scribbled in. You can sit here. Let me just tilt it a little bit more. really wacky. <laughs> I quite like it. Okay back to the uh, flour and water paste and the Elmer's glue. It's now dried. With the flour and water you'll notice if I just do that it could actually you can just peel it off and because it's on the surface the any some of the dye it hasn't kept it very white because it doesn't seep into the fabric necessarily. If it doesn't seep in, then it can't protect it all. And what will happen is the dye creeps underneath the um, the mask, if you like. Um, it has done quite a nice job just there. So that's quite nice. Now the Elmer's glue, I can't peel it off. So that I'm going to have to run under the tap. And um, I'll come back and show you that. Right, as you can see, I've washed it. This is where the Elmer glue was. And uh, you can see it, it washes out quite nicely. And there's little bits of it I haven't quite got out there. But it washes out quite nicely. And it gives quite a good effect. The block pinted leaves had a go out didn't really work and unfortunately with me scrubbing it I actually did rip my fabric but then the fabric was quite weak anyway because as I say it was an old pillar case but I can definitely say that Elmer's glue is definitely worth 
playing with. What would be quite nice now would be to do another layer of glue and dye it again and build up the layers. So anyway, hopefully that's got you thinking about giving it a go yourself. I didn't leave the dye for a full 24 hours so it, the colours really have quite faded. I do recommend covering it in cling film and leaving it the 24 hours it recommends. But uh, not bad for a play. Well thank you for joining me and I'll catch up with you again soon.